Hello Pilots, welcome back to Motion RC Live. Uh, for the first time we're doing it on Thursday. What's today? July 2nd because tomorrow, we forgot last week that tomorrow's a company holiday. It's mostly a holiday, I guess, when the 4th of July falls on a weekend day. You usually get the Friday or the Monday off. Um, so tomorrow we will be off for Friday, so we thought we're not working on a Friday if we don't have to before July 4th. So let's do this today at the standard time and then next week we'll be back on uh, a Friday. So we have a big show in store today. Hopefully we get through it all, but as you can see, we finally, Alex finished his entire crash compilation video. We'll release that separately live tomorrow, but you guys will get to see it here live. Um, we're gonna go through, I got a chance to get the Tiger Moth out yesterday, uh, the other day, and got three flights on her, and she's gorgeous. I enjoyed flying it, so we're gonna show that. Then we'll run through the community, Facebook, Instagram, Hobby Squawk, and then I finally got a chance, this is one of the few 64 millimeter models I never got to uh, fly myself. So got an unboxing, assembly, we'll go through. And then on this one, I always see a lot of guys talking about underpowered uh, models and it always comes down to one of the first questions is, did you calibrate your ESC? And uh, when I turned, when I plugged this one in and initially did it, I my ESC, ESC was not calibrated. So it was a good teaching moment. So we'll make a separate video out of that, but I wanna show you guys, just anyone, you know, how that works and what could happen, you know, to your model. And then we'll close it up. But we wanna start out just about an hour ago, we got the unfortunate news um, that Triple Tree announced that all their fall shows, so they have a heli extravaganza, Null in the fall, a couple little fly-ins, um, they're all now canceled for 2020. So that's a big blow to us. We had, you know, we were planned obviously to go in May and then um, we pushed back our rentals and stuff to October is when Null in the Fall would be to head there for Null in the Fall. But now that is now canceled just an hour ago. So unfortunately the entire RC community suffers when Triple Tree has to do this. It's just, it's crazy to me that it's three months out. I mean, I guess good that they announced it early but um you know so people don't make plans but either way very unfortunate that we will not be attending triple tree so that's just super sad and not what we wanted to see this morning that kind of put a damper on uh on the early morning here because we were excited to get out there as we always are and you know and Alex was making a joke, if you guys remember the last time we were at Null, my lit up F-22 got stolen and there hasn't been a Null since. So we're just saying, that guy who did that, it might be your fault. So <laughs> don't do Thanks that. Don't do that. Thanks a lot. We're going to blame you. But um, again, uh, so I think we're going to start here with the crash compilation, guys. So this is an entirety video um, of most of the submittals we got. And we added a few little bits of some of our own that you might not have seen. And uh, I'll be back in about 5 minutes and 30 seconds. So... <laughs> What'd you do? That looks like you had a bit. Oh, oh no. Oh man. Ah. Death. Oh. Okay, you look into the worry. Oh, oh, oh my mate, did you get that? Heads, heads, heads. Oh. Yeah. Ah! Oh. Jeff! Oh. We destroyed it. Oh! Oh, oh God! Landed. Oh. 
No! is an awesome crash compilation thank you for doing it alex thank you to everybody who submitted and uh we'll make that live sometime tomorrow morning i believe our friday video and uh yeah there's some pretty epic crashes in there a couple of extra bits um from from ours i believe we had the f-22 from john carlo yeah. which resembled the actual winner might have been a better a better version of it but uh <laughs> never got submitted that was from justin uh, justin lamb took that with his cell phone while we were doing uh, fly through and uh, yeah, you know it is what it is. But crashes happen. But it's fun to, as I say in the in the description of that video tomorrow, keep those cameras rolling because if you are going to have a crash, it's better to get it on camera so at least you remember it. But um, taking a look at some of the comments, I see XZ. You look like new to the channel. If you're asking me which is my favorite airplane, um, it's always going to be Spitfire. Always, regardless if it's RC or real life, nothing to me matches that. But um, yeah, so again, guys, thanks for joining. Now, I think we move on. We got the Tiger Moth in front of me, if you guys have seen, um, you know, put this together recently. We, we had it on the live show way back. Finally got a chance to get out with it. And um, I believe we're ready to uh, roll. What do so. we want, the slow-mo or the maiden? Oh, there's a slow mo. There's a bunch of slow mo. Oh, let's see. Well, pretty. let's see a slow mo looking pretty. I didn't even see the slow mos looking pretty. Oh, we she's got like five minutes of these shots. <laughs> <laughs> she's absolutely good. So this was my maiden. You were doing slow mo yeah, on my maiden. This is the first flight. Now I have to say, I'm using a 5000 4S. I'm using the Admiral GP5 motor, all the recommended spec on the uh, on the web page. So as you saw in previous videos, I had to do. Hey, what up, Rich? Um, I had to do some, you know, customizing. I added three ounces of nose weight um, in front 
to get it to CG, but overall I was pleased with it. I was able to fly her around the field perfectly at about half throttle. I couldn't imagine ever needing to go higher than that. This is, for me, it's an old timey, have fun, relax style of flying. So, um, wow, these slow-mos do look epic. <laughs> is there, what's a ground slow-mo? That, that was the stuff they saw at the beginning. Oh, that, okay, that's yeah, what they yeah, saw yeah. at the beginning already. So we don't have to show that. Yeah, so we can get into the main flight. But she tracked it. really nicely. I mean, it was funny. I mean, Alex said, like, when I was getting low to the ground, she just wanted to stay there, you know? Like, I don't know too much about how the air goes through treats biplanes, and I have to definitely get out with, again, work on my landings and such. But I say, let's get to the actual flying. So this isn't the main. This would have been my third flight. And um, I'm going to talk here in studio through it, but as long as they can hear it. It's low, but overall she's a solid style flying and you'll hear, we'll release this video on its own and you'll hear what I had to say while it was happening, but I didn't need to do too much as far as trimming on it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a, a gorgeous representation of the Nexa models. It's awesome to have our, uh, you know, to have all these balsa birds. I'm excited for more of them. And, um, you know, overall this was my first biplane experience. I've always wanted to get one. Uh, and I'm just so glad we got it because I think the Tiger Moth, I think it looks beautiful. It presents really nicely in the air. So someone just asked, is it glow engine compatible? Yes, uh, Justin, it, well, I'm not sure glow alpha could ask the question, but gas, definitely. It comes with the fuel tank inside. Um, you know, they give you all, yep, so alpha says yes. But yeah, you could definitely put, you know, these were made a long time ago, probably before gas, you know, before uh, electric even became popular. But I just went, you know, I went electric because I enjoy the sound and the ease of electric. But overall, she's a, a beautiful flyer. You know, I have to work on my rates. Like, she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to roll, <laughs> let's put it that way, like, very quickly. It's not a pit special. So I, I definitely got some altitude, and it's more of a barrel roll than a, you know, than a point roll, if you will. But, uh... You know, overall, she'll loop, she'll she'll have fun, but I, I like it for, like I said, the gracefulness of it. You know, anybody who's ever flown an old-timey aircraft probably will enjoy, but for me, I this would have been a plane that I would bring to Null in the fall, and you'd see me out there at Dawn 6. Dawn Patrol. Yeah, Dawn Patrol with this and my Spitfire. It's usually always a Spitfire, but this would be Dawn, Dawn Patrol Special. And the only customization I actually want to make is I want to tie a shoelace around the neck of my pilot so it flickers behind the plane like Snoopy or something. You know, really, really get it going. Maybe mount a man hanging. I just saw a crazy biplane video uh, posted on Facebook, I believe, where a guy changes a tire while they're flying in the air. <laughs> he climbs out of the cockpit, brings the tire down, and puts a tire on the, on the aircraft and then climbs back in with no straps or anything absolutely insane gb use toilet paper maybe but i mean it's, it's neck's really thin i want like a nice piece of string that'll that'll live not just fly off and i don't want anybody trying to cut the rope with my uh with my tiger moth here but now um i'm forgetting my flight time on it i i put on i think a seven minute timer for this is it's what five what seven. we land i think i i started with a four minute 30 second timer because i knew 5004 s and the fact that I had no intention of going full throttle, and I landed with like 70% battery. So then I, I upped the timer to about seven seven minutes, and when I land, uh, check in the pack, I believe we're at 3.8, like right at the storage charge. And, you know, better pilots than me will be definitely be able to, you know, extend that pack. But also, it depends on the system you go with. Uh, a guy at my field has a different version of the same model, and he has it set up on 6S with a 3300 milliamp LiPo. You know, there's a bunch of different ways you could set up, you know, any Balsa ARF. But overall, and this is just me, you know, learning it. This is only my third flight with it, and I'm trying to be gentle. I don't want to, you know. It just looks so cool. It just looks so cool. Yeah, we don't get to we don't get to do these kind of yeah. planes that Here's often. Here's where you started to push it around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Small field flying. And that's what you could do. The one thing I, I realized, like, it, it wants to turn on a dime, which is nice. And I think this is where I do a roll, but you can see, like, so this was about 90% oh, rates. Uh, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, just get back over, please. Get back over. <laughs> Maybe add some rudder into it. 
That's what I should have did. But man, you know, she's, yeah, she's not an aerobatic beast. But maybe I need to put a co-pilot in with a handgun out the side, or Alex was saying, like, Indiana Jones style. No ticket. <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my dear, they got us. <laughs> Sean Connery shoots at the tail. <laughs> but it's really, really beautiful flyer, and we'll let this play through. And it's, uh, you know, definitely a worthy one. We still have a lot of the silver in stock. The British camo went out fast on this first run. But uh, we definitely still have some silver stock. Um, so good. Okay. That's the way Tony said that's they're, they're supposed, supposed to roll. To. Okay. All right, Tony. And Tony has the Tony Jensen guys. He's got the Gilmore, and I believe he has another Black Horse model, if I if I remember correctly. But um, he's all over Hobby Squawk, everything, posting pictures and such. Oh, is this your landing? The was landing this a touch and go? Sketchy. I think this was a touch and go. This was me. I, it bounces. The one thing, the, the gear definitely flexes. Yeah. So, like, you know, I'm used to, like, the Spitfire sort of stick to the ground. <laughs> I couldn't get it to stick. But, again, I, I didn't have enough time to get more flights on it that day. So it's something I'm going to have to learn and get back out there. Ah, the DO. We showed Tony's DO335, which is the other crazy one I want. I like the crazy model, so after this, I either want to get the twin Mustang from Nexa to build, or the JU-52, um, or again, like the DO from Black Horse. I like the the ones you don't see every day, you know? When it goes inverted, yeah, it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, like, I want to do it an inverted, so awesome. I want to do an inverted flight, but I got to stay high, you know? I'm sure it'll do it fine, but it's like, it takes a little long that I'm used to to get into the position. So then I'm just like, just want to get out of the position. But overall, I think it sounds good on that motor. That motor, more than enough uh, there. And again, I have three ounces of weight attached. If you guys saw last week I was doing, or maybe two weeks ago, I was doing the CG here in the studio. I ended up going with just uh, gluing or using the adhesive right to the motor mount. I just stuck on six half ounce lead weights to uh, just give me the, the final CG but I might rip some of those off and eventually get myself a weighted prop nut, like somebody said, so I might need even less weight up front, which, you know, again, cut the weight. And I'm even tempted, as some people said, to maybe instead of having the 17 gram uh, servos for the elevator and rudder, just going down to a smaller servo. The and this is my bounce trying to, oh, oh another yeah, touch and go. <laughs> another bounce and go, if you will. Well, like I said, I mean, I'll always revisit planes because I can, you know, always nice to get out there. And as you learn the, the plane more and more, you can do better and better as far as the flights go. Or I'll just give the plane to Patrick for a flight <laughs> and, and let him take care of it the way it should be flown. But, uh, but even Alex, I think Alex could fly this. It's, a, it's a pretty much a pussycat. And I'm sure landing in the grass, this might be good for... Cause I was trying to learn how it wants to stall. Like it wants to slow down, it wants to sink. So I'm sure like three point landing would, uh, you know, might work better on the grass. But overall guys, I was impressed with her and I think that's where it, it ends there. Super impressed with her, happy to have it and wanted to show people, you know, at the next event that we go to, but who knows when that's gonna be at this point. Um, I don't think there'll be, there might be, the next show might be, uh, Mary Boozers is doing a show, Toys for Tots, back in, no, uh, in November, so as far as that goes, but I might look around for another show close by just to get somewhere, um, but yeah, depressing, the whole 2020, you know, has just been write depressing, it <laughs> just write, write it off, off in general, like, you know, I'm just happy that we get to still do what we're doing, and, um, yeah, but sad for Triple Tree, and and the event schedule but nexa awesome if you guys want i mean easy to build for the most part just take your time if you're somebody who's never built a balsa model you're looking at the king of that like it's only only a couple in yeah, and I, I see shelby being like when are you guys gonna start burning fuel and that's like the next mountain shelby yes that's the next mountain so i want to get out with that spitfire that we gave to jason miller a member of my club he's got that converted to gas he went out for a test flight having some issues with his electronics so as soon as he gets it ready to roll we'll get out there and film that 
Um, Patrick Crowsdale, if you guys remember on the live show a few now a few weeks ago, I had the big zero and the big and the zero wings are right there. I have the big zero that I'm going to put on electric and the P40 Patrick's going to build up and we're going to get that gassed up as soon. We're just waiting for some bigger motors. I think we need a 60 cc engine for those models. And then I even have another one in the box that's a big boy that um, I can't even tell you what it is yet. But that one I want to get up on on gas eventually. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was something I hoped to do, but maybe by this time next year, I'm flying my own gas model. That would be awesome. But at the start, I'll have somebody else set it up, let me fly it, learn how to fly, because I don't feel, I feel I'll be able to fly anything. Um, but then setting it up, getting the timing right and such, like even just going in and tuning the motor with a prop on, just like I'm watching the guys do it and... Oh man, it's just like, like another part of the hobby. Yeah, everything's scary, you know, a little <laughs> scary to me there. You know, something clean about electric, and uh, I just love it. But let's uh, do our rundown. I guess we'll start on Facebook, guys. And we thank everybody for sharing anything they do. Um, we always get some cool stuff. So I think we'll start. Art Sesso was the first person I saw with a custom Bronco from myself, um, and he put it in a camo scheme. And I dig it. He said he's just waiting for Cali graphics. So uh, that's awesome. Uh, Richard Wildstone, what size What size has engine? What size is the engine on the Nexo, you're saying? I use the Admiral GP5. So I think it's the equivalent of like a 5cc uh, motor. Pretty small, but uh, it's really nice. But Art Sesso, thank you for sharing that on Facebook. That thing looks awesome. I can't wait. I'm sure he's going to post some pics once he gets the decals on. Then we another guy with a mid-21, and funny enough, I got one coming. This is one of the few free wing models that I have yet to fly, and I'm excited to get one to, uh, you know, revisit, because now it has the, it's another one of the models that got the high-performance version with the upgrade, so, you know, we got to get out there and show it all with the new motor and everything. Um, so I'm excited. I got the blue one coming my way, and I can't wait to fly it, but this scheme looks awesome. I believe, forget what where it's from Romanian I believe it's a Romanian scheme so he's one of our EU customers but well done with the camo and everything I thought that looked really really awesome somebody saying they might have lost video refresh your page the fish bed is fantastic oh and then this comes from um, Todd Cormier he shared this on Facebook but then he actually sent us a ticket with big boy toys he goes out to a bunch of flying events and all different events and brings planes not just from motion but from everywhere but has a lot of free wing and flight line representation and stuff and just all around you know getting out there and promoting the hobby as a whole um so you know very awesome that he did that maybe i'll get a chance to work with him uh some way in the future but i wanted to share that todd if you ever see this um definitely uh thank you for that i mean we can't thank anyone enough everybody who takes their planes anywhere else you know, aside from the field, you're doing the hobby justice by letting people know it exists. Because a lot of people probably don't even know our hobby exists. And if they did, they'd get involved. And then lastly, or another one on Facebook, was this Talk T1. Love this scheme. I had done a Black Dragon one way long ago. And then it was gone before I ever had a chance to, to show anything about it. But, you know, Peyton and Black, obviously... You're going to worry about the bubbling, but I thought it looks cool. I, li I like black models. Um, it just looks sharp, and I really love that, too. So good work. And who was that again? That was Glenn, Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis. And then we'll show Wesley Miller shared his HE111, which has been Papa dotted, and he's getting prepared to get that flight in. And, uh, you know, we can't wait to see it, man. This is one of those black horse models that... Again, ticks all my boxes as something different. Look at those um, dots. I love the dots. Look at those dots. Great job, Papa. I guess, yeah, Papa. Fantastic with the dots. And just if you want to drop in the comments, like, what makes you decide the color you're going to use to use your dots? Like, why not black? Why'd you go light? You just wanted it to be seen. Do you have reference pictures or something that you went by? But either way, the way Papa does it, it takes time and it's worth every second of that time so that's fantastic and then the last one was james bowen uh he shared a video flying an me262 and it was awesome love seeing that i love i love the 262 and i believe it's in the original scheme or he custom schemed it um i gotta ask him but 
one of those models that just every time you go and fly it again you go revisit you're like why don't i fly this all the time and it's always super stable and quick and one of those models that i actually loved it looks so cool when the wing when you pull it away yeah you pull it away it sounds mean profile. it lands easy it glides nicely like it's it's definitely to me it's definitely one of those if not a first EDF, definitely a second EDF because it is graceful. It's, you know, nothing really hard about it. It tracks well. Um, just all around awesome flyer on the Freewing 262. So James Bowen, he's a new member of our customer community. He's already been sharing. So love when people not only join um, and don't just lurk, but actually uh, share with the community. And, you know, we can't love it enough. That's awesome. So on to the next couple Instagram uh, things I saw this week, which is awesome. Oh, Patrinsic Brothers RC, ME262. You changed the name. You just, I guess, did Blage get mad that it was just Robert Patrinsic for so long? You finally threw the brothers in there. But uh, awesome for joining us. And I know you love the 262. You flew it around a bunch of times. But thank you for stopping by, ma'am. Wes told us he actually dotted one, one, two times with silver and one with a black dot in the middle of each of those rivets oh man that's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot that's of a lot dotting of they don't call them papa dots for nothing big salute robert to you gb say hi to vic tony everybody in the group for joining us george baker's here uh we got a packed show maybe thursday's the better time to go so <laughs> thanks for uh stopping by but let's get to instagram saw a couple cool shots this first one is from what's his name captain again? sammy Captain Sammy looks like he's got his mask on in a location where he does not need to social distance because <laughs> he's in a desert. But with his F-18, looks fantastic, and that looks like a cool place to fly. So thanks for sharing that. I love this AL-37 scheme. I don't know the airline. It's called, um, I wrote it in there. Uh, what does it say on the side? Oh, you didn't you didn't rename no. it. Oh, okay, <laughs> I name it in the file when I send them to you. But uh, somebody said I believe it's a it's a European airline, but just looks retro. And I always dig the retro looks on on airliners. Are you trying to find the yeah, I'm trying, to find her. <laughs> trying to find the name right now? I wrote it in the file name. Oh. Yeah, Hapag Lloyd. There you go. Hapag Lloyd. Um, Sounds like where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> that looks absolutely. I, I dig the orange too with the. The orange nacelles, everything looks great about that. And then lastly, this was the coolest one. So this guy's modding his Freewing T33 into a turbine version. And all he posted was a picture of this fuel tank that looks customized, uh, embedded in the foam. So I can't wait. I hope this, I, I wrote to him. I hope he ends up posting some videos somewhere that he can share with us. Maybe we can share it here, but I'm always... It's always interesting to see how many people take foamies, especially the what would be a small foamy for a turbine, you know, an 80 millimeter uh, EDF, and turn it into a turbine jet. You know, it always seems like a lot of work that, <laughs> you know, I don't necessarily need. All my ED, every EDF I've flown, I always feel has been more than powerful enough. But hey, if you're gonna do it, we'll happily show it and call attention to it, and I hope it works out well for you. Big shout out from South Africa, Daniel. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining uh, the show today. So that runs down Instagram. So guys, you can always follow us. And Alpha, he's in the comments. Remember, Alpha dot makes. Uh, he hasn't posted in a little while. Shame, shame, shame. But uh, when he does post, it's worthy, and you always get some cool stuff in there. So definitely exciting. Let's head over to Hobby Squawk. There was some interesting going on, goings on. Did you get Steve in there? I was, about to, I was just looking for Steve. I don't think you ever put in a Dropbox. Oh, I didn't put in a Dropbox. <laughs> ah, I exported. Sorry, Steve. We'll show it next week. But Steve Hodges, um, he got his Nautilus. If you guys saw, he has the Disney Nautilus. He got it in a pool. In the, he put it in his pool and had it go down and up. And it looks fantastic. And I just saw it. Uh, this morning, tried to get it in the show, but then got busy doing something else and forgot. So we'll move on. And this is who? This is... Voodoo Vood Vooduniak. Uh, he's been a long-time squawker, but he is in the process of converting his AL-37 with the airplane inflatable pilot from the movie uh, into an FPV, the inflatable co-pilot. 
I love that he put that in there. But he's gonna FPV his airliner. So, um, I can't wait to see the video of it. I don't know how you're gonna, I don't know how you're gonna land it in that high alpha position. But uh, now I just got thinking. You when sent I... me the pictures and I did not see the airline pilot. You didn't the see that. <laughs> you didn't see that. That was partly why I grabbed it because that guy is a is a superstar, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> as far as the movie goes. And you can't even make a movie like that anymore if you wanted to. But uh, that was absolutely. I can't wait to see it. I hope he posts. I'm sure he'll post video. I called him out on Hobby Squawk to do it. So when he does, we'll uh, show it and then obviously. You know, anyone you see here, jump on their channels, hit subscribe, or jump into Hobby Squad, guys. If you aren't there in the forums, create an account. It's easy. Such good information being shared, and it's a good community. It stays pretty clean, um, and people stay on task, and it's. It, I love seeing stuff like this. So, good work on you. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it again. And then, uh, actually, the second one here is from Evan D., another longtime uh, squawker. He find, he put the FPV in the Bronco. So I wish he had a better TVL. Like, it's not a wide view, but he's definitely got it on a pan and tilt. Probably a head tracking mount. But that's what... One thing about the Bronco is awesome is the fact that it has those big windows. You know, it really makes for a good experience. And just... Watching this makes me want to do it because we have some of that stuff coming soon. So the Bronco is definitely a model that should be easy to fly, easy to land, and a perfect FPV platform. So uh, overall, I love like coming into a turn here. He can like look at the runway, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, then turn, get straight on. So I cut this video down a little bit from what he initially shared, but touches right down and awesome fpv is a great experience if you've never done it, it it can take old models that maybe you don't fly enough and breathe new life into them you know it, it's it just gives a whole different experience you know you then you can take the goggles off fly the same plane line of sight and it'll feel different than when you're doing it fpv i always enjoy every chance i can get out and uh do some fpv so evan thank you so much for sharing that on squawk now we are looking, yeah, right, Alpha? Impressive FPV landing. I, that's that's where I'm going to want to see what Duniac does with the airliner because the airliner, you're not pointing the nose at the ground. You're like this. I don't even know if you could get enough, you know, be like a Concorde nose. You'd have to have, like, go down to see. You're just, like, you're going to have to guess, and that's, you never want to guess. So I just, you know, I hope it works out for him. That's a big you know, a big ass, but if he does it, maybe, you know, that's something I should do, <laughs> like, because <laughs> I would be more, I could get away with, with the accidents more than other people, so that would be awesome, but, uh, so next, guys, free wing F-18 sitting in front of me, this is the 64 millimeter top hatters, and this is the 4S version, so the more advanced version of them but i never got a chance to fly it i think i've i don't even know if i've ever seen it seen it fly in person so it was one of those that we just gotta you know go through revisit uh models and i love the bigger f-18 and i always wanted to see this one so again what does it got it's fixed landing gear um but very nice foam finish for a model that is a classic i mean alpha could say in the in the comments this one's probably been produced a long time it's definitely old longer than i've been here and um i think maybe the only person i saw with it was uh steve hodges i believe had one in the top hatter scheme but i was impressed taking it out because obviously you get used to the newer stuff but seeing it come out of the box it looks fantastic the epo foam looks great i believe at the price that it's it's put if you're looking for you know something fun that you can easily toss in the car this is one of them um, nothing too tricky about uh, the assembly, which you'll get to, but here you just see a time lapse of this was yesterday, just pulling it out of the box. So again, fixed gear. I'm sure I'd be able to hand launch it and pull that gear out, but I actually like the way they did the, uh, you get no steering, which is nice. So you're, that's, so it's, uh, it's no rudders, but you do, you just plug the nose steering gear into the, uh, into the rudder port. But now this is just gonna be a time lapse of how fast I put it together. Yes, sir. Really? <laughs> but don't I like leave like there was yeah, yeah, things well, going? Oh, okay. He cut them all together. Because yeah. I wanted to wait for glue and things like that. 
but for the most part I believe it's minimal screws but you do you are gluing you know you're definitely using the the glue that comes with it you know for some areas like the nose cone you're gluing in you're gluing in those those rudders uh, the vertical stabs I should say but the main wings assemble the the control horns are already on the servos on the main wings which I like and then even the the, the the horizontal stabs, it's just two screws that hold into like, so it's like a, a, a rod with a little groove in it that the screw goes in so that the elevator, so that the horizontal stab can't fall off, um, you know, can't slip off the other way. And then you got to glue in the back parts, you know, again, older tech, but still more than fine, you know, still holds up, I believe, for what it is. Like the other thing, a couple weeks ago, I only got out with the 64 millimeter A10 and I love that thing. It's fun on 4S. And this one can run on anything from a 4S, I believe, 1000, it says, to 2200. Chris in the comments said he put 6S in his. He put 6S in this thing? <laughs> <laughs> There's always somebody who does it. There's always somebody who does it. So you're leaving the same motor on and you're just swapping ESCs. And then what kind of 6S pack are you fitting in there? We do actually sell, I don't know if we still have them, 1100 6S packs, but that's not giving you much life. But, um,. You know, definitely it's one of the older models that was made around the batteries for its time. So a 2200 fits fine. I think I could probably get a 3000 in it if I want to. But um, yeah, 64 millimeters, they're super fun because they're not, you could be more dangerous with them because they're not as expensive. <laughs> Let's be honest, you know, like the planes, at least for me, that aren't as expensive, I get more dangerous with. It's the bigger planes that are usually easier to fly, but they're the ones I, I baby around more so so then as far as so that was um time lapse of the whole build so yeah. you want to show so some of the, the unboxing and the yeah itself. show it how it comes out of the box so people can see it and maybe if you could search we could drop a link to it or i hate to make you work in the background but pulling things out of the box you see it all packaged nicely I'm, again i say this probably on every video i'm always impressed with how they how they fit everything in the box as perfectly as they do but minimal components coming out you got two control rods in that little package with some accessories again you got your nozzles and then you got your landing gear package so that has you know your fixed oh, wait, gear the wrong one. Oh, this is the wrong one we're watching I, no no the uh i put in the 3s you put in the 3s oh, that's fine there's the 3s the royal maces one that's the 3s yep and yeah. then royal maces there is a 4s one as fine. well he'll find it but yeah, you could get it on 3S version. I, I just went for 4S. You know, why not go high performance as far as this goes? You know, I'm always the type, if, if a plane can fly in both 3S or 4S, you'll never see me bring a 3S pack to the field. But like the Lippish is a 3S bird and most of those other hand launchers, they're fantastic. Oh, the 4S is now out of stock, <laughs> which is fine. So grab the 3S, swap the ESC. We'll get more back in, but you know, it was just something that I was excited to uh, go through. But again, the ways I love the detail on it. Stickers are already on it. You know, you don't have to do any sort of decaling. I like the paint job. Again, just one of those models that classic, you know, classic from Free Wing. Nice to revisit. And then it makes you appreciate the newer stuff that comes out because you say, oh, wow, look at the advancement. You can actually see, you know, companies grow by the older stuff. You know, like this was before my time. But it's nice to see where they go when you pull out something newer. And you're like, oh, wow, you know? So go through. There's no sound. Obviously, there's no, no sound no on sound these. Either. No sound. So, again, that's a decal on the, uh, on the back that I would never want to do myself. And I believe it's actually, it looks like it's painted on there. Looking at it now, it's, it, it looks like a full paint other than the, I think the lettering is the only thing that isn't painted uh, as far as you know, stickers go. And they even put like those, the fake like uh, LED kind of lights, the landing light things up the wing. A lot of little details on this bird for what it is. And it's got the same 200 decal on the nose um, that my customized big one had on it that I got from Cali. But overall, decent size. And this one, after I fly it in the stock uh, configuration, I, I don't know if they released, somebody could tell me, did Top Gun 2 release the scheme that Maverick's Super Hornet is going to be in? Because since this is a Super Hornet, this is the one that I'll probably customize um, with that scheme. So I have to check, I, I definitely have to check that out. 
But overall, what am I looking at in there? I'm looking you're at the ESCs. Going through, the going through Did yeah. I smell it? I don't. Do you guys? <laughs> do you guys smell your models when you take them out? I don't know why. I love like new package smell. Whether whatever I open up, when it's something like this, I I, I don't know what it is. Whether it's a balsa model or a foamy. I don't know if that sounds weird. I don't care. But uh, <laughs> I always I always give a good smell. I love like that new car smell type of deal. Then you can see plenty of space up front, and we'll show it here on the table in, in a little bit. And there it is. Go back to the product page for the 4S one. I forget what motor is. Oh, I could look right here. It's in front of me. Never mind. I don't need you to, I don't need you to do it for me. So the 3S version is a 4300 kV. The 4S is a 3500 kV. And the 3S uses a 30 amp ESC, and the 4S uses a 40 amp ESC. So, not that much different there. But the recommended batteries for both is a, is the 2200. So I have the Admiral 2200 in there, and we could show CG in a little bit. So then there's your accessory bits, and we're going to put this together in, you know, a standard style uh, build video, because I don't even think we had a build video on this, but it always helps people when they revisit models, because each model on our website is, you know, going to be new for somebody someday. So it's always good to update them and do the ones that never got done, things like that. Got your missile rails, so this one definitely calls for some, if you got yourself a 3D printer, 3D print some ordnance, I will definitely be doing that. Gotta get some sidewinders on the side. Just sidewinders probably, I don't think I'd try to put anything under the wings because <laughs> I did that with my big one and yeah. didn't enjoy that the first time. But there you go, get a couple sets of screws. Majority of the screws are gonna be used for that nose gear. Leave it six screws to get the nose gear in. And then it's just two for the two for the horizontal stabs and four for the main wings, two on each side. And that was all the screws I, I used. The main gears just slide in, and um, overall it's just it's just well done. So actually come back to me. So I could show you how you want to get behind the camera. So hatch everything fits right in here. So right now I have the 2200. Uh, located where I'm getting CG so that's probably where I'm gonna fly it but you have a lot of space to push it forward uh, if you want you know for a, if you wanted to use a, a smaller milliamp pack a lighter pack you have plenty of space to go to go north into the uh, into the nose and what I like too there's like a little divot downside which perfectly fits let me pull that there we go which perfectly fits the Admiral I just have the regular six channel but I realized that it's flat enough that you could totally put the six channel gyro uh, in there too. And it's down and out of the way and away from your battery, away from the ESC electronics. So, you know, remember whenever you're setting up a receiver, I don't care what brand it is, if it has aerials, tape those 90 degrees and make sure they're clear of everything. So you never have to worry about a signal issue. But when I put this on the uh, CG out of the book was saying 60 to 70 millimeters from the start of the wing root so I it basically is the the screw holes in the front is about where your CG is so where I have the battery there and that's I got a little bit of nose heavy so that's probably where I'm gonna start and then there's still plenty of room for me to slide it back uh, you know if I need to but overall I'm excited we're gonna get this one out next week as you see we're always revisiting stuff so the second I get a chance to fly this, I'm going to take this out again, the Tiger Moth. But I definitely want to get video on this one. She is, I believe she'll be fun from what I've been watching around on the videos. I mean, she, she looks like you can have a lot of good fun with her. Now, I wanted to actually, I guess we could get into it now. The When I plug this in, so I noticed right off the bat, and it was great because the learning moment showed people that when I initially set up, I started to move my throttle stick, and my throttle stick went up almost 20% before the motor kicked on. So that is what leads us to the next and last step with ESC calibration. So 
I feel like I see it a lot in comments and you know a lot of people say this model is underpowered. I've been to my flying field. I've done it. Um, I actually did it with the 70 millimeter F35 when it got sent to me. I didn't even think of it. I tested it on the bench, wasn't paying attention, went out to fly it and I'm like, oh, this feels really underpowered. And Alf was like, what are you talking about? It's it's a new in runner, like it's super fast. And then when I, I landed it, like, so I was flying and I realized that I did not calibrate my ESC. So I was not getting the full range of my throttle. If you don't, cal you should always calibrate your ESC on any model, you know, out of the box anyway, just by point, um, you know, but Basically, I was moving my throttle up on this one, and it wasn't until, like I said, 20%. So I'm losing that top end power. Because I believe I plugged it in, if you remember, video, Alex. We have video. You want to roll yeah, it? show it. And here's where we go. My, and I'm talking through so you can see. Yeah. You want to talk through here or you want right. to let them listen? Oh, I talk through it here? Yeah, let them listen. So we're on the throttle curve. Ready? Mm -hmm. And now the throttle's going. But you see that curve is all screwed up. So, should I just do the ESC calibration now and then we'll show this on the live show? Yeah. To show yeah, that. That, bit? that gives us better coverage yeah. than, than trying to do it the other way. Okay, so what you want to do is calibrate your ESCs. You're going to come over the model. Unplugged, leaving your transmitter on. We'll just we'll roll back, bring the throttle all the way up. Okay, throttle up. Now plug in and listen for the beeps. Bring the throttle back. Now it arms. Now let's do this again. The second I'm going to scroll to the to the wheel. Now you see the throttle curve, ready? The second it left, it is now back on. And I bet when I goose it, it sounds a lot better than it did. So now your ESC is calibrated. And that was it. Or am I still talking? Yeah, yeah, you're I can't hear myself when it's going. <laughs> so I'm for some reason on, on, on our screen the comments look like they stopped, but I'm seeing comments went to my phone here. Is there access to put the upcoming 64 millimeter fire booty in there? Um, I'm sure. Yeah, there's plenty of. It looks like there's plenty of space, but then again, actually, it, you know, it's split down the back of the nozzle, so you might have to do some customization. But uh, you know, we will see. But yeah, definitely super fun for the money, but. That ESC calibration, I think, uh, you know, that goes without saying. It's one of those that you have to, uh, you know, you have to do for, do it for every model. Get in the habit of doing it. And for the most part, all the free wing and flight line all have the similar beep tones. That first set of beeps is your throttle calibration. So they all, I, I don't know of any real ESCs in my, in my time I could think of other than the Fairchild, which was different because I used a... Um, a CAS or ZTW one, you know, so obviously check the manual for how you calibrate your ESC on whatever you use, but for the most part, free wing flight line, plug in, it's that first set of beeps. But you could see, if you don't do that, then I could totally see people coming, oh, it's underpowered, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I've seen people say it at the field and, you know, um, and I've gone over and said, did you calibrate your ESC? And then it's a whole new plane. You know, if you're only getting 80% output, you're not getting the top end of your thrust, you are not gonna have a lot of fun you know in your flight and then and you know it happened to me in the past but no more I always something I always do on any model it takes, what, five seconds? It takes all yeah, yeah it takes all of five seconds to do it too so you know it's something that just make sure you do it and you'll always have more more potential to have more success you know um, with your ESC but again overall I'm digging this one so uh, I like the look of it too. Like I said, did anybody, I couldn't see, did anybody comment on Top Gun? No, I don't think anybody knows uh, what the Top Gun scheme is yet. I don't think they released it. I don't know what, uh, I forget from the first movie, what, if he, is he in a real unit? A, a real squadron? 
or did they just make up a squadron for the movie? Now, now I'm, my Top Gun, uh, <laughs> my Top Gun knowledge isn't isn't excellent. Where's Patrick when you need him? Patrick would know. He's a big fan, big Top Gun fan. But um, so yeah, guys, that, that'll about do it for our show. We can go to the in closing, and we got about ten minutes here. And I don't know if our comment section see. I'm seeing more comments. Oh, now they're popping up. There we go. Back to you. We got. It's a real. It's fake. <laughs> it's it's fake. <laughs> it's sure. in a real squadron. Gotcha. So nobody knows. It's <laughs> nobody knows for sure. But either way, I'll probably put in that scheme. Just but who knows when that movie's gonna come out? I mean, if the movie theaters don't open, then yeah. you know, are they gonna release that on a? You know, my fear with a with a sequel to a movie like that is that it probably would have been good enough to be a straight to sequel, <laughs> straight to straight to DVD anyway. <laughs> That's usually the case when they try to revisit old movies in a sequel. That it just, no matter what you do, it's just never gonna ha capture that same, you know, essence that the first one had. It's it's tough to succeed, it's especially like the memory now. of the first one too. You're like, oh, Top Gun was great, and then you go about. Go back and watch it. Like Maverick wasn't the best person. Yeah, yeah. So you go back and watch Top Gun. You're like, is this movie really good? Like, it might have been good then. It's not really that good now. You know, uh, overall, like the 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 coolest stuff is obviously the the air stuff when he's doing. But there's a lot of wishy washy beach volleyball and beach you know, like yeah. he's it's there's a lot of rough stuff in there that worked, I guess, in the '80s, but. You know, we'll see if they revisit the beach beach volleyball game in part two. Do they do they upgrade to a gymnasium this time? To a real volleyball, but who knows? But guys, do you have any questions for us on this? Uh, on anything that we spoke about today, anything at all, because I'll hang out another nine or so minutes with you guys. We always want to keep the show tight and make it an hour, you know, each week. And we only go over if we have to, but you know. If not, I want to first say I want to wish everybody happy 4th of July. Um, make sure, you know, obviously our U.S. customers, um, you know, hopefully you guys have plans and you're able to get out and do things. I know George Baker, Tired Iron, he's having people over there. I wish I could have came, George, but we have other plans for this, uh, for our July 4th. We're excited, though. Always, always enjoy the fireworks and kids love the July 4th. And it's one of those holidays where you don't have to get them gifts. <laughs> We're just going to enjoy the fireworks. They know that it's one that it's not a Christmas, it's not an Easter, it's not something like that. When will you release a new Jet Chains to us? When we can expect a new release. Frederick, it, it'll come when it'll come. Trust me, there's always, probably especially now, we have so many new brands. I mean, boats are, this is the month the boats are going to finally arrive. You know, we're expecting, you saw we added some cars now. So, those kind of questions, when we expect a new release, a new release could be anything in any category but if you're talking about like a jet and then there's some there's always something in the pot in the pipeline in every stage so when it comes you guys will be excited about it keep checking back i every am Friday. so yeah <laughs> keep keep revisiting watching because if we i will say this every new release we have we're gonna turn it to you'll see it on this show uh live so normally friday at 12 that's when we're gonna do do those sort of things we'll always do it live um, it just makes sense that way. Alpha said the answer is always soon, of course. What else do we got? Ghost Rider was a real F-14 squadron, VF-142. Dads knows the answer. That sounds right. So it sounds intelligent enough to believe it. It's like going to Wikipedia sometimes. You're just like, oh, it's on Wikipedia. It has to be true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Papa. Yep, short and sweet. Can't wait to see that HE-111. I hope you get to fly it. Need a battleship with working guns to celebrate. Yes, we do. Oh my God, can you imagine the America we could get with a tank, a boat, a plane going overhead? Like, get enough people on, on sticks, we could mix it all together and make an, a truly epic. Olsen, you're flying, looking great, Patrick. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, we had a great, that was just a great day. Um, yeah, you know, I still got this. Patrick did that. From last week. Patrick did that. Learn to land. Looks, what is this? Oh, this is you chasing. Yeah. Did it freeze? It looks like it. I think it froze. <laughs> just kidding. Is it gone? Just kidding. Oh, that was you chase. Uh, it was the raw 4K. So ah, uh, okay. Wasn't with that. Well, maybe we could we could we can make that live 
uh, in a separate video. But yeah, Alex got to chase us in those two models. I absolutely love the single engine Warbirds in that size. That 63 inch size is great. So I'm like everyone else. I hope Flightline eventually does more of that size. I don't care what it is at this point. Give me a P-47, give me a P-40, give me a Zero, give me a BF-109, give me an FW-190, whatever it is, um, I'd be excited. But the fact that I have my two favorite single-engine Warbirds uh, makes me happy. The Spitfire first, and then the Corsair two, for me. American. Yep, very happy and safe for Todd Bretta. Thank you, Todd. Oh, he... Todd, well, how do you... I forgot. He told me how to... I always say... Is it... He got mad at me for either saying bread because i said breda or breda i'm yeah. forgetting todd i breda? <laughs> you know we work together but we work afar you know we only talk on the phone we never met in person but um pronounce it for everybody todd he got mad at me before and i'm sorry i think it was like two weeks ago breda that's what it was breda i always said breda so breda breda no, we'll never forget it, Todd. We'll never forget it now. Yeah. Motion, you ever going to do a buyer's rewards program? You know, I, I don't know, TNS. Like, one thing about us, we don't follow what other people do. You know, like, we don't we don't rely on sales. We don't rely on gimmicky things like that. I don't know. You know, it just it is what it is. We believe in our products. We believe in our service. You know, and those are the two things that are paramount to Motion RC. You know, is that our products are excellent and everything I've opened or played with since my time here has been true to the case. And, uh, you know, that's those are the most important things. And then when you have an issue, you could come to our customer service team and those guys are going to help you as best as they possibly can. And, you know, we try our best with everybody. We can't make everyone happy, but I think we make a majority of people happy. And, you know, who knows? Maybe in the future we do something like that. But as of right now, we just... We worry about what we do, and we try to worry about those two important aspects. Quality products, quality service, and then everything else falls into place. You know, I could leave tomorrow, and it's not going to change the fact that Motion RC is going to have quality products and quality service. You know, just want to add to it. Um, but good question. Good question, and, you know, you never know. Stay tuned. We're always, we're always adapting, always trying to, you know, to do what the customers want. It depends on what the customers demand. That's why jump in Hobby Squawk, you could ask us anything, whether it's new products. Like I see somebody saying we need a B25, Alpha saying on it. <laughs> so, you know, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, you want to be here for. You guys do giveaways. Yeah, I mean, that, and Vic, we're trying to get the contest. We want to make it, you know, it's like a return. You know, like it's, it's, it's great to give something away and get something in return, like, you know, like the crash contest was awesome. The the seeing everybody, the customizations, like trying to reward people for that is awesome. And then this year it just stunk with events. Usually we get to events and we do giveaways at events or provide product for events, but there just haven't been many events, obviously with the events of 2020 being what it is. You know, it's this has just been one of those like sort of lost years, it seems. It's, it's incredible that it's already July, we're six months in. Seven. And uh, seven, seven this is the seventh month, <laughs> it's crazy. and it's just like half the year, and it seems like, you know, everything changed. It's I saw crazy. something like every day is like, it feels like 3,000 hours long, but every month feels like two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the months fly by, the days, you know, yeah. I just hope things get back to, to normal for us. Tony Jensen, a Nexa P38. Alpha will say, on it. Alpha right on it. <laughs> you know, like, get in there. That would be awesome. No working ordinance. Yeah, that's... Oh, Jeremy. Yeah, working ordinance, shooting projectiles off of RC aircraft falls under a no-no. You know, like, yeah, you, they don't really like that. Um, people do it. You could always do it. We can't stop you from doing it yourself. But, um, you know, anything coming off your plane in the air, um, other than maybe, like, a candy drop or something i don't know how that works with a like a candy drop because guys do that in my field a lot but again they're making it themselves so um it isn't lost got a killer new logo yes you do gb and it's a gorgeous looking logo uh as all check out gb linden guys he does live shows every uh wednesday night uh mary boozer's in here he does his live show every sunday night 
um, and it's just a whole com <laughs> it's just a whole community um, you know built around they talk about all things whether whatever new plane they're working on not just motion stuff um, by all means they're they're talking about just the hobby in general and having fun if you if you're tired of watching Netflix and all the stuff <laughs> the same news channels over and over again jump on YouTube man and converse that's what we love about the live shows is you can interact and you know and have fun with it and I said maybe in the future we'll jump later in the day but I kind of think this time is working because a lot of you know Americans can watch while we're at work and the European market you know right now it's usually five six o'clock there so it's a good time for you know we're a global company so it's a good time for uh, the globe I guess if you will at the noon show the only thing I may change is the day because when you have a holiday on a Friday if I want to take a three-day weekend with my family having the Friday show makes that tougher so I may eventually move this to middle of the week sometime either a Tuesday Wednesday or Thursday but uh we'll see but right now 12 o'clock on Fridays is the jam and we're happy to do it oh and George Baker the free fall RC podcast so guys who like to listen not not necessarily need to see because ours is a you know our type of show is you definitely need to see what's going on to get the full enjoyment out of it but free fall RC podcast uh George Baker's on there with a few other guys and they talk about all things RC and uh, they run a weekly podcast. So you can download that, I think, on most platforms um, that do podcasting. So that's a fun, uh, you know, fun way. There's so many different ways to get your RC content nowadays that, I mean, I can't even watch it all. I mean, there's somebody going live every night with RC, and all the shows are awesome. But I, I you know, I have to pick and choose my, my battles. Depends on how the night's going. But, you know, when you work in RC all day, it's hard to then spend all night uh, in RC. I love it, but... I need some free time. I do have other hobbies that I like to do. Um, but guys, I think that'll do it. It is now 101 on Thursday, uh, July 2nd. So we will be back next week. I'm not sure what we'll be doing next week, but I'm sure it will be doing something fun and it'll probably revolve around what we get out and fly. Next week, I just want to give you a tease. We got out. You saw those B-24 tank shots. Got a chance to take the B-24 out. Uh, last week that was awesome this tiger moth video that you you saw today with my real commentary real time that's going to be coming crash compilation that you saw that'll come out tomorrow so share that around if you can and guys before you leave us here today hit the uh like button it's down there that always helps us out um and we can't thank you guys enough jump on hobby squawk enjoy your fourth of july for our u.s customers and in the europe hopefully you guys have a great weekend to fly and nice weather. Thank you to everybody for joining again, and we'll see you next time on Motion RC Live.